Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. Things are looking increasingly bleak for Sergio Perez's future in the sport after Max Verstappen dominated the Brazilian Grand Prix from 17th on the grid. Christian Horner says, look, we had a very strong car on the weekend as Max Verstappen clearly showed during the race. Why didn't Sergio Perez make similar great progress in the field? A P11 finish for Perez, another dismal weekend. That leaves Red Bull in an increasingly obvious position, some might argue. Their grip on the Constructors' Championship is now long gone to either McLaren or to Ferrari and Franco Colapinto is now seeing like a serious prospect here with further rumours today The Colapinto is right in the target line of Red Bull to get him into their family next year very much in Twitter your thoughts in the comments hit the like button if you enjoy subscribe if you're new as always I would greatly appreciate it. a couple of things going on around the world of F1 as well Valtteri Bottas is gone from Alfa Romeo Kick Sauber okay it was Alfa then it was Kick Sauber F1 team whatever and uh, his career is potentially an F1 coming to a close but we know that the rumor is that he's going to be joining Mercedes again as a reserve and I think it kind of makes sense for both parties this and actually I thought this is kind of cool so I miss him and it's just a sports player and they quote tweeted this with this image of Valtteri Bottas here when he was of course at Mercedes I think 10 race wins 67 podiums obviously a hundred plus Q3 appearances made in a row also, Bottas, I think, holds the record for the fastest ever top speed recorded in Formula 1 and a few of the great things that he achieved in his time at the team as well. But, um, yeah, it's a heavy rumour that Bottas is going to return there as a reserve. And then I think it keeps him in a decent position to try and get back on the grid in the future. But as it stands, Bortoletto is getting that drive at Audi Sauber. Motorsport Week talk about Ferrari. They're not going to introduce any further upgrade to their car, basically. It may not be necessary. The reality is it's unlikely likely they win either championship. Max, of course, has the drivers sewn up. I'm pretty sure actually now Leclerc is officially out of the drivers' championship. It's only Verstappen or Norris that can win, and um, you know, there's only one winner. In the constructors, it's still on for three teams. I think it's still possible for Red Bull, and it's certainly still possible for Ferrari, but they needed to capitalize on a poor Sunday for um, the McLaren boys in Brazil. They weren't able to do that. Leclerc wasn't that well positioned, but he still finished a respectable P5, to be honest. And then of course, science crashed out. So wasn't what Ferrari were hoping for, but it's not like they've got plans to bring a further upgrade to bolster that challenge. The Mercedes, of course, is still a nightmare. Since the summer break, Mercedes have had a grand total of one podium finish with George Russell, and um, they've brought upgrades. I think they expected Austin, Brazil would be tracked where they could challenge again for podiums, if not wins. That has not materialised at all, and their slow corner deficit is still there. And Hamilton is like, you know what, guys? I've tried. I've tried. I've done the experiment. I've done the trials. I've been the guinea pig over the last three years. Nothing has really worked apart from relatively rare occasions. So I'm sure, you know, Hamilton's looking forward to getting into the red car next season. This, though, was a big piece of drama on the day. So you guys know all the talk over the last couple of weeks has been in large part about the swearing drama, right? So Max dropped an F-bomb in a press conference. And it's a bit different in an official press conference with the FIA or whatever than in media interviews. But um, any swearing at the FIA apparently have started a deem unacceptable. And this caused lots of drama because, of course, basically everyone, certainly Verstappen, saw that after he was given, like, community service for swearing in the press conference. And... Everyone on the planet was like, this is ridiculous. And the problem then was that Charles Leclerc, he was asked the question after Mexico, like, uh, what did it feel like when you had that massive moment out of the final corner when trying to defend from Lando Norris? Of course, he goes off and nearly crashes it, but eventually keeps it on the track and makes a massive save. And of course, um, you know, Charles dropped the F-bomb to kind of describe his emotion in that moment. And then he quickly realized, hang on, I shouldn't have said that. The problem is for the FIA that they made the kind of precedent of punishing punishing Verstappen in this way and therefore they had to do something for Leclerc even Verstappen mentioned it in an interview it was like well I got punished for this why isn't this guy getting punished he didn't mention Leclerc by name but the implication was that there was some inconsistency in play they brought Leclerc before the stewards they then gave him like a fine or something or a reprimand and they said oh well he was apologetic so it was less of a big deal it's like I'm sure that the stewards and the FIA making that decision on Leclerc for swearing at a press conference was like they knew it was ridiculous, and I think they, I mean, I hope at least that they realised that that was ridiculous, and I'm sure that they knew that, but the problem is that they painted themselves into a corner because 
we obviously saw what happened with Verstappen, so they had to do something to Leclerc. So the drivers today, the Grand Prix Drivers Association, headed up, of course, by George Russell, has come up with the following statement. As is the case with every sport, competitors must abide by the referee's decision, whether they like it or not, indeed, whether they agree with it or not. That is how sport works. The drivers are no different, and we fully understand that. Our members are professional drivers racing in Formula 1, the pinnacle of international motorsport. They are gladiators, and every racing week they put on a great show for the fans. With regards to swearing, there is a difference between swearing intended to insult others and more casual swearing, which I guess is fair. Like, if you're in a post-race interview and you're, you know, swearing, saying this guy's an effing whatever, then, um, you know, fair enough, maybe that should be penalised. But um, if you are just using it as a point of, you know, description, as in describing bad weather, or describing a car, for example, then, or a driving situation, then maybe that should be no big deal. And it's like, there are so many problems in this sport that need to be solved. This is not one of the biggest problems in this sport by any means. And it's like, there are certain things that the FIA do, and uh, apparently is totally fine, that you might look at in the sport and say, hang on a second, is this a good idea, or totally fair and reasonable? How is this fair, but this is not fair? It's a question that's always there. But um, then the GPDA then actually fire back with another statement because they don't just say, oh, well, we think what we're doing is fine, which it is. I mean, let's be real here. But they then say the following. We urge the FIA president to also consider his own tone and language when talking to our member drivers or indeed about them, whether in a public forum or otherwise. You know, he made those interesting statements about, you know, the swearing. He was like, oh, the drivers are behaving like rappers or something. Wasn't it something like that he said? It's, um, it's a joke isn't it? Further, our members are adults. They do not need to be given instructions via the media about matters as trivial as the wearing of jewellery and underpants. You guys remember that over the last few years, those certain bans that affected you know, a couple of drivers, of course, Hamilton was the big jewellery saga, I think back in maybe 2022, was it? The GPDA has, on countless occasions, expressed its view that driver monetary fines are not appropriate for our sport. For the past three years, we have called upon the FIA president, Mohamed Ben Suliem, to share the details and strategy regarding how the FIA's financial fines are allocated and where the funds are spent, which to be fair is a good point, right? Because the joke is that it just goes towards their dinner budget, and I wouldn't be surprised. We also have relayed our concerns about the negative financial or the negative image financial fines bring to the sport. We once again request that the FIA president provide financial transparency and direct open dialogue with us. Kind of interesting, right? That we as fans don't know where the fine money goes, and that should maybe be expected. You'd have thought the drivers or the teams or someone might have known, but um, apparently nobody knows apart from the FIA themselves, which probably isn't the best, is it? We once again request that the FIA president provide financial transparency and open dialogue. All stakeholders should jointly determine how and where the money is spent for the benefit of the sport. So they pretty much directly call out the president, and they do so again. They actually specifically mention him here. So yeah, it seems to me that George Russell and the team cooked up on this one and um, it's definitely putting the ball back in the FIA's court isn't it to say look we think what we're doing is fine what you're doing is a joke for multiple reasons sort your gaff out and um, you know I'm sure the FIA will have to say something in response so let's see I thought the direct look they can say what they want obviously but I thought the direct kind of implication here that Mohamed Ben Selim is a serious part of the problem is firstly probably fair but also maybe to me somewhat surprising that they would go this far on those kind of accusations but intrigued to your thoughts as ever in the comments. Let's talk though driver markets because Gabriel Bortoletto is in the Sauber next season. It might be a terrible car. But um, the positive thing is that Bortoletto is currently leading Formula 2. He's obviously a promising driver. Look, I don't know how good he's going to be. Probably mainly because I don't think Formula 2 is a great representation of how good drivers actually are. Like we've seen drivers do well in Formula 2 in the last couple of years and flop big time in F1. And we've seen the other way around, drivers who haven't necessarily won F2 but prove to be the real deal when they get to F1. So um, where does Bortoleto fit in? I don't know. Obviously the teams have more data than we do on simulator runs and stuff like this. And McLaren, obviously they saw the situation and said, look, why would we restrict him from going to another team on the grid? when we have Oscar and Lando lined up for the next couple of years at least. So I think it was a good decision really for all parties. And for Salba, it gives them a young talent, but it also gives them a Brazilian talent. And that could be critical for, um, well, bringing in some cash. I mean, they had Joe for the Chinese money on some level. Bortoleto, maybe better, maybe worse, maybe the same. Who knows? But um, he will at least bring in some serious interest from Brazil, which I think should be a positive thing for the sport in general. And I thought this is a cool image as well of Max Verstappen and Gabriel Bortoleto quite a few years ago now. But um, yeah, crazy when you see images like this, right? Of back in the day and then thinking about the fact that both of these 
guys are now lining up on the grid next season. But Red Bull, again, one of the key topic of conversations of the day, largely due to this whole Colapinto situation. So Franco Colapinto is getting interest right now for multiple parties. In addition to the parties we know might be interested, Alpine have potentially thrown their hat in the ring. This may be some sort of Flavio Briatore disaster class or masterclass, depending on the perspective. But um, their driver lineup for next, if you guys aren't aware, is Pierre Gasly, who is staying. And of course, Jack Doohan, Formula 2 driver, son of Mick Doohan, superbike legend, who is going to join the team. That's been confirmed. But um, and Doohan, we don't really know how good he's going to be. In the same way, like Doohan and Colapinto, in some respects, their Formula 2 campaigns weren't that massively dissimilar, maybe. Like the occasional good results and stuff like this. So, but Colapinto turned up to Formula 1 and has done a stand-up job so far. Sure, Colapinto, he's Mexico and Brazil, not great. But, um, look, it's not expected that every weekend he's going to be phenomenal and, you know, you'd expect our one to beat him on average over the course of the rest of the season. But Colapinto's definitely done enough to turn heads and um, that may be enough to get him a drive on the grid for next year. So, if you're Alpine, though, the thing is, like, what do you do? Because would you sign him as a reserve? Why? I mean, you know, Williams will just keep him as a reserve if you want him at some point. You maybe just go over there and get him. So if you're interested, maybe you just sign him as a full-time driver. But then it's like, you're not getting rid of Gasly. And Jack Doohan, you've selected him from your Alpine Junior program. Maybe there's not much confidence in him. But it's like, if you're Doohan, you're sitting there thinking, well... I could have done. Maybe this isn't true. I don't know how good Doohan is. When he gets to Formula 1, maybe he will. Maybe he won't on this evidence. We'll see. But um, Doohan is sitting there probably thinking, well, why would you kick me out of the situation? Because I've not got a chance to prove I can do it in F1. Colopinto has. He's done well. But um, doesn't mean that I couldn't. So it's kind of like, if they do this and they get rid of Doohan and they say, look, we're bringing in Colopinto, that would be, I don't think it would be a good decision, to be honest. I don't really see it being necessary. But also I think it would be incredibly harsh on Doohan. I don't think that will happen, I think is the long and the short of it, as far as I'm concerned. Concerned. The more likely outcome is that he ends up in some capacity over at Red Bull Racing, right? And apparently, Williams have played a masterclass here. I will say, James Valdez has cooked this season because he signed Sainz, which is mega. To think about it, now obviously, Sainz had other options. He could have gone to Audi. There are a couple of other teams that are interested. But um, of the options available, the fact that Sainz chose Williams is pretty commendable. I think that Williams and Valdez managed to pull that off in the first place. But, um, and of course, he would have gone to uh, maybe Mercedes or Red Bull or someone else if uh, a good opportunity was there. They actually wanted him and didn't seem like there was much interest in actually making that happen from either party. But um, still... An Albon Science lineup next year at Williams is very good, way better than you might have expected. He kicked out Logan Sargent at maybe the perfect moment. I know that there was still criticism of that decision and the way that he handled things, let's say, back in Australia this year when Albon crashed and then they gave him Sargent's car. That was pretty brutal, and I do think they mishandled some things because it was clear from that moment that they had no faith in Sargent, but yet they kept him. The issue is, they got rid of Sargent right when the community goodwill towards Sargent had basically run out. I mean... There wasn't that many people when Sargent was fired after the crash in the Netherlands. That said that he shouldn't have been. I think most people would have agreed at the time that, yeah, there's no point keeping him around. Certainly that was my take. And um, I wasn't sure if Colapinto was going to be the man, but it's turned out that's been a great decision. And now they might be able to sell him for millions of dollars. Like this could be an absolute masterclass in Val's right. Keep the phenomenal team next season. Kick out Sargent at the perfect time. And then bring in Colapinto with huge commercial interest and sell him to another team for millions. Like um, it's could be a Williams absolute classic play. But as I say, if he's going to go anywhere, the most likely outcome, of course, is Red Bull Racing in some capacity. Almost certainly it would be the B team, the junior team, the sister team, RB, Racing Bulls, whatever they're going to be called for next season. Now, Horner was spotted in the garage, I think in the hospitality with, not the garage, but in the hospitality with Williams last weekend. And we kind of speculated, could there be anything in that to do with Carlos Sainz? Could they be saying like, hey, Sainz, Let's make it work. Like, let's run it back, basically, and we'll make it work with you again alongside Max. Horner, though, says today, no, Carlos is committed to Williams. He wouldn't form part of our plans next year. So if we take Horner by his word, which maybe we shouldn't, but, uh, you know, let's say we do, that kind of confirms that if he was in hospitality talking to James Valls, he was almost certainly talking about Franco Colapinto. And then today, the race dropped an interesting article where they basically describe how this whole Colapinto thing is more legit than maybe was initially thought. And there is, like, a serious possibility right now that this actually happens because the Brazilian Grand Prix was another disaster for Perez. I've got a cool trivia to share with you guys, actually. 
This was the first ever race in the history of Formula One where two drivers on the same team finished the race in the position of the number on their car. Bit of a mouthful, but um, Max finished this race P1, he is number one. Perez finished this race P11, he's number 11. That's never happened before, I believe, in the history of the sport. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. But, uh, you know, congratulations to Perez, of course, for making that happen, right? But, um, look, as the article says... He's not scored a podium since the Chinese Grand Prix. And even, look, Verstappen had an unbelievable drive in Brazil. And there's not many drivers in the sport who could even have done a drive like that. There's only a handful that maybe even have the ability to pull off a drive like Max did. But part of it was that his car was very well set up for the weekends. It did seem like Red Bull really did get to grips with the circuit. Because even in the sprint race, where Max has in recent times, you know, in pure race trim, just been falling away in the sprint in Brazil... You could tell that he was basically the fastest car because he was able to keep up with the cars ahead in the dirty air. And in the wet, that distance seemed to be exacerbated. So obviously it was mostly Verstappen, but um, it was in part the Red Bull just being good. I mean, like, Max has not just been good at Brazil... Like, he's been the same driver for a long time, but we've not been able to see that because his car hasn't been the best car for a while. I mean, that's what I would argue. Anyway, once the car goes back to being the best, you get to see something like that for Max in addition to a wet weather masterclass around Interlagos, which Max is known for quite well. Not to take any credit away from Max at all, obviously, but the point is that the Red Bull was good on the weekends and Perez started right next to Max. So, surely, he could have made further progress. But, um, and that's what Horner says. I mean, Horner made it quite clear that there was nothing evident in the race, no technical issue, no limitation that could explain why Perez just didn't make any moves. And Horner even then says, yeah, Sunday was a great chance to take a big chunk out of Ferrari and McLaren in terms of points. Max did, but um, it wasn't enough, of course, because Perez wasn't even in the points. And this article was basically going on to describe how... Perez retiring and stepping away is a very and increasingly likely option right now. They say that Perez's only choice is should he lose his Red Bull driver to view it as a sabbatical or just accept that his Grand Prix career is over. That's why the cleaner solution that is being proposed right now is that Perez simply retires. Now, Look, we've heard this for a couple of years now, that Perez is just going to retire out of nowhere. And Perez himself is constantly talking to the media saying, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm here next year. I've committed to it. They've committed to it. I'm not going anywhere. But um, it just becomes quite difficult to believe that that can be the case forever with the performances that happen week in, week out. So... Uh, that's the rumour that Red Bull are going to keep Perez as an ambassador to the team and he's going to be dropped and then going to retire. And that's the neater solution to everything. So I don't know what you guys think of the comments below. But, um, you know, when Horner comes out and says that there's no reason why Perez couldn't have made progress in the field like Max did it quite clearly shows that Perez has fallen out of favour to some degree with the internal team there at Red Bull, and I guess there should be no real surprises there. Just before we close out the video, Max only got a 9.8 for his drive in Brazil, I guess because he got unlucky in qualifying or something. We know that these power rankings are super bogus. I mean, have a look at this. These are your overall season rankings, and sure, there's a couple of drivers in here like Lawson, Bam, and Colopin, who haven't really driven that many races, so I'd kind of exclude them, to be honest. But um, the best driver of the season, apparently, is Lando Norris. So uh, do you guys buy it? Do you guys believe that Lando has been the best driver of the season? Like, to me, it's been Max. And then I would argue Leclerc. Like, I think Leclerc has been better than Norris, in my opinion, over the season. And um, maybe you, I think Norris has been better than Piastri, personally. But um, I don't know. It's a matter for debate. And Russell's been pretty damn good as well. But Lando being over Max in the season is, like, is actually pretty entertaining to me. I'm not going to lie. So if everyone's interested in your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.